Well, hello, and welcome to Shane's Hobby Shop. Today's project is going to be another one for Mom. No, it's going to be one for me. That's right, we got to build something for me today. Alright, so what's it going to be? Well, if you're a member of my Patreon page, you already know what's going on. That's right, I give my Patreon exclusive videos and heads up on what's going to be to come. Now, if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, I'll leave a link in the description below. Plus, I'll give a little pop-up here behind me to where you can go ahead and click on and become a member of my Patreon and get those videos that I don't put out to everybody. So, on to the project. What is it going to be? Well, we're going to build an Arondite chair. Arondite, Adirondite, I don't know, tomato, tomato. But anyway, it's going to be a chair. A few days ago, I made these patterns for the chair, plus a bunch more. And so we're going to be using these to cut out our cedar boards to make the chair. Now, where did I get these patterns? Well, I became a member of Woodworkers Guild of America. And, and because of that, I was given access to their plans. Now, because of that, I cannot give you the plans, but yet I can give you the link to where you can become a member of the guild, and you'll be able to search out around that chair and get these plans, plus many, many others, and very helpful videos. So now, what we're going to do, go ahead and take these boards, we're going to transfer these patterns on over to our cedar, and go ahead and start cutting them out. All right, so let's go ahead and get busy and make an hour chair. Okay, first off, I'm going to go ahead and cut your boards down to a rough length. This is not a final length. I'm actually going to do about an inch bigger than what the pattern boards are showing. And now I'm going to go ahead and rip them down to the final width. Now some of these boards won't need a pattern like the, the seat slats. Uh, they're just regular rectangles so we can go ahead and cut those down too. I'm trying to pay attention to uh, the edges to see what side is good, what side is bad. and. Try to cut off the bad parts, if any. Some of these boards do have bad parts, but not all of them. It's actually a pretty good uh, uh, selection. All right, now we're on to the bandsaw. Uh, we do got a bunch of these parts that does need to be cut out with the bandsaw. Okay, this is where your pattern boards actually come into play. This is why you need to really take your time on making these patterns as good as possible. What I got on the router table now, it's a flush trim bit. I'm actually trimming up all of these boards to the pattern. It's a lot easier on the, on the router bit if you trim the boards as close to the line as possible. That way, when you put the patterns on, there's really not that much more to cut off, and it's, it's not all that strenuous on your router bit. Okay, now this is my own personal preference. The actual uh, 
plans calls for some of these boards to get the exact same roundover as the factory boards have on, on the edges, but then you cut a lot of that factory edge off, so they want you to come back and replace it with the same roundover bit. But on not all of the boards, but me, I went ahead and, and done majority of the boards, I rounded them over. Now assembly time. Let's go ahead and see what we can do. This is the two angled legs I'm putting together with the lower cross piece. That's what's actually going to be holding two angled legs together. Now here we are putting on the front cross piece. That's also gonna help support the legs. Okay, this is just a little jig I made to help me line up the armrest. Now moving on to the back, I'm actually putting the upper uh, cross piece in and uh, I also got another little jig, I believe it's 11 and a half inches long. You have to pay attention to the plans when you get them, but this brace is to help me space out the back part of the arms perfectly. Now I'm going to go ahead and bolt both these down. Don't forget each of these joints will need glue also. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the back slats on. I'm going to go ahead and start off with the outer sides first. What I did is I measured one inch from the inside of the angled legs and made a mark, put me some glue down, and that is the pivot point of where the board is going to be staying at. The top part of the back slat will be leaning against the armrest. Now I'm just going to center up the center board as best I could and then we're going to add the middle boards to the center. Also trying to uh, 
lean them out toward their mat sea outer boards. Okay, here I'm just using a little uh, spacer here to help me uh, line up all these boards kind of evenly. Hello, and welcome back. All right, where are we at now? Well. I can be done if I wanted to. The chair is complete. But I want to go ahead and put some type of sealer on it. Yeah, this is cedar wood. It really don't need no type of sealant on it. But yet, the wood will be starting to turn a, a brownish gray color over time. And with that, it's fine on the bottom side. But on the top side, I want to keep this nice cedar look going. So, what I'm going to do, I want to seal just the top, maybe the front, maybe some sides, but that's it. Not worried about the back side, not worried about underneath anything. I'm going to leave those plain like it is, and the reason why, I want it to smell. I want that cedar smell to come out. So, what I'm going to do, is I went and bought this shellac from Zinsesher, I don't know, Bullseye Shellac, okay, it's the clear stuff. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to paint it on, like I said, the arms, the seat, the backrest, even some, the front, a little bit of the side. Probably put a, a couple of coats of this on here and then let it dry and that'll probably be all I'm going to be doing to it. Alright, so let's go ahead and apply this and see where we're at. I like this chair a lot, Shane. 